Hey, David Raffoff here. I hope you're having a good day. I just wanted to do a uh, quick video on um, a new feature in Phoenix that I haven't really seen uh, much about. Uh, it seems like it's been there for maybe a couple months, but um, the documentation is pretty thin. Um, so one of the problems I had when I was learning uh, Phoenix was I was trying to decide if I wanted to use channels for something or if I wanted to use Live View for something. And they have some similarities, um, but also some uh, differences. And uh, at first I was trying to figure out how to use both and make them communicate together. Uh, and then I think I found a simpler uh, solution for the specific thing I'm trying to do. So the problem I had was um, initially I was using channels. Um, and channels are really great for keeping a bunch of clients in sync. And um, you can also do things like uh, trigger uh, JavaScript changes with channels pretty easily. And that was really appealing to me because uh, what I was, what I've been working on is setting up uh, a charting application like this, where there's just a chart in the background, and uh, you know, as um, if data changes, I want to be able to like update this chart automatically. Uh, but the other side of it, uh, I'm sorry, so that's like a pretty good fit for channels. But then the other side of this is I also want to create a UI where you can edit all the things that factor into what this chart should be. Um, so I'm making basically like a personal finance application. And uh, I look for a link below maybe to that. But uh, channels didn't seem like a great fit for that because, um, you know, I want to have uh, for like forms basically that people are filling out. And as they submit them or even maybe in real time, uh, just goes and updates this chart. Um, and so there's another technology you can use with Phoenix that's pretty much custom made for that part of it, which is um, live view. And the idea there is as you're, you know, making changes on the front end, it's just automatically updating the state on the back end. And then anything that cares about it can um, get re-rendered or show that state wherever it wants to show it. But it wasn't really clear to me how they fit together. Um, and at first I thought kind of what underlies both of them is using web sockets and or, uh, channels. So I thought maybe you could just like share a socket between the two. And I think there are ways um, to do that, but it got kind of um, hairy quickly. And I kind of realized I don't really, I'm not really looking for the added benefits of channels as much, uh, you know, having clients stay in sync as much as I was just looking for a way to send changes up to the back end and then um, be able to manipulate things on the front end with JavaScript. And the reason that's important to me uh, is because I, once this chart renders, I don't want to like re-render the whole thing. I just want to update the data and then re-render the lines. <clears throat> and it may be okay to totally re-render it, but I worry that it'll just be too slow or um, maybe there'll be like flickering or weird bouncing of the chart like that. So I was kind of stuck. I wasn't really sure what the right thing was to do. Um, and I started reading, you know, looking around for how the two play together. And there's really not a ton of information out there. There, um, there are a couple articles and a, a talk that I ran into that kind of covers a similar situation that's not quite exactly the same. I'll link those uh, in the description. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I was kind of stuck. And as I was digging in a little more, uh, I found out there's this thing called Hooks um, in Phoenix. Uh, I guess it's Live View Hooks. Um, and they were kind of interesting because they're basically callbacks. So uh, as as your live view components mount or get updated on the back end, uh, it'll notify the front end, and anything that's hooked in, you know hooked into that uh, um, will will basically get those uh, messages, and you can decide what you want to do on the front end. So it seemed like a pretty good fit for what I was trying to do, uh, and so far it's worked out pretty well. Um, I've just done the initial pass of um, updating my chart to be able to work that way. Uh, I haven't quite moved on to actually building the uh, form interface yet, but that'll probably be my next step. But just because there isn't really any info out there about this, I thought I'd share with you uh, what that looks like. Um, so let me just jump over the code here for a minute. And you can see here, um, this is kind of the, uh, down here is kind of the usual setup you'll have when you're setting up live view so you um uh, actually uh, i'll get into some details on this but basically you set up a live socket and uh you connect to it and i think this maybe is the topic i can't remember off the top of my head um 
But one thing that was interesting to me is um, this API has actually changed a little bit very recently. Um, and I'm just using their, la I'm working off their latest uh, commits from master on live view. Um, but I, when I went to try this hooks arrangement, so with hooks, you basically pass in your, your final argument is an object uh, with a hooks key and then uh, um, the hooks that you want to use. Uh, I, I noticed that the API was different from what um, I had in my application. So I had to go and make sure I was actually pulling like the latest thing from uh, Live View um, and in using that in my project. And another change to the API, I think, is you have to uh, import socket here and pass that in explicitly. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it looked like before, but those these were the changes I had to make. Um, and so then up above here, you can see I've defined hooks. So, you know, I'm passing in a hooks object. Um, it has a, a chart. Uh, property here and that is an object that has um, two callbacks in it so there's mounted and updated and mounted uh, will get called when the live view mounts and basically what I'm doing when it mounts is uh, I'm, I'm saying I have a the element that's uh, that I'm tracking here um, that I'm, I'll have to show you this in a bit, but you actually attach the hook in the um, HTML. So the, the bit of HTML, the view that I'm uh, interested in, um, I'm going to call that the data element. And then it has a child, it's the only thing in it um, that represents the chart. And then um, there's some stuff you have to do with uh, Canvas or Chart.js, uh, so you have to get a context. But then I'm saying uh, the data that I'm interested in is uh, going to be on the data element and it's going to be from one of the data attributes and that is the chart data attribute. Uh, and it's it's a big string and I need to parse that into a JSON. And then now that I've got all that, I can um, generate my chart uh, using that context that I pulled off earlier and uh, generating all the um, the line chart from the data uh, and I'll explain that in a bit this will make a little more sense when we look at the full picture and then once I have all that this part's still a little um, sloppy in my opinion but uh, it's a starting it's an easy starting point but essentially after you've mounted this um, you can um, uh, you can attach anything that you want to hold on to to this and uh, you'll be able to pick that up over here in your updated callback. So for now, I'm just holding on to all, the, all this work I did so I don't have to like redo it later because I'm going to be interested in some of those pieces. So uh, the short of it is mount, this mounted callback will get called after the live view has mounted and that'll only happen one time. <clears throat> and then this updated callback, anytime that an update comes in for that live view, this will get run. So here I'm just grabbing some of that work that I already did above. So I'm getting my data element back. It's a place I want to look for all the uh, the data attribute that contains the data. Here, here's the chart that I made. And then I'm just saying, hey, go give me the data again um, from the data chart attribute. And uh, we're going to set the charts data to be the, up, the JSON uh, parse version of the data. And then just update the chart. And that's pretty much it for the JavaScript side. So what's cool about this is uh, the live view side, you know, will handle can handle the the communication back and forth with the server, um, so that the server is tracking the state, and then the view just gets updated with whatever the state is. Um, and then if I need to do anything on the JavaScript side, um, I can just use these callbacks to listen and decide what it is that I want to do. So that allows me. Um, to achieve what I wanted to achieve earlier, which is not having to like totally re-render this entire view when the um, state changes. I can just get the new data and then update the chart instead of completely blowing it away and uh, building a new one, which could potentially be expensive. I don't know for sure, but um, I'm trying to set this up so it can do like 100 years of data with really um, big data sets. Uh, so I just want to avoid that if I can. Um, and then I'll hop back over to the code here for a minute since I only kind of showed you one side of this. So on this side, this is my live view here. 
So here's my markup. So um, I'm going to render and I've got some stuff here you can just ignore for now, but this is pretty much the part that we're interested in. So I have a section for this chart and you notice here I have an attribute, um, HTML attribute called uh, Phoenix uh, PHX dash hook and it's called chart and that name is significant. Uh, so if we hop back over here, it's going to look for this hook. So you want to make sure those things stay in sync. And then here is that data attribute um, that I was mentioning earlier where we we're accessing data set dot chart. That's going to map to this guy data dash chart. Um, and then uh, this is interesting because um, as uh, the state of the chart changes on the back end, um, it's going to just output all of that right here. So basically I'm using the live view to keep the data up to date on this parent element. And when it changes, I'm reaching in and uh, updating the child element, which is um, my chart. And you'll also notice this. Um, so one of the things that was a little quirky that I ran into was um, I, I assumed if I just put the hook on here that this whole element wouldn't just get blown away and re-rendered every time. I uh, found out that wasn't the case. So the suggestion I ran across from a couple people was uh, on the parent element, set up the hook, and then within it, have a child. And that child, you add this uh, Phoenix Phoenix um, HTML attribute, which is just you know PHX dash update equals ignore. And uh, when the live view uh, gets updated, it's not going to just blow away um, this HTML element. So um, yeah, and, and I just kind of stumbled across that in a couple places. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this video was to um, make it clear that's uh, a good way or at least a way to do it. I won't say it's the best way, but I don't know how else to do it at this point. Um, and then, uh, yeah, basically I am tracking, um, sorry, I'll go down here a little bit so we can see when this component mounts, it's going to say, Hey, um, I'm mounting this thing uh, for this session in the socket, go get me the chart data. And I have a, uh, an agent running here. Oh, it's basically just a gen server holding on to some state. And so I say, Hey, give me that state. Um, and then here, uh, I'm going to on that socket update, um, chart to be this new chart data. And, uh, this is some leftovers for some other code. I need to just clean this out. Um, but I could probably just return. Okay. And, uh, updated. I don't, uh, this is adding a little bit more information for something else for a counter that I'd had. Um, and similarly, you can ignore this stuff. This was also for that counter. But most of the magic's happening here on mount. Um, I haven't actually moved on to doing the updates yet, but that's kind of my next step. But when this is mounted, um, it'll trigger that uh, Phoenix hook for chart mounted over here. And it'll just do whatever it needs to do. And to prove that to you, I'm going to hop back over um, to this. And if we look at the inspector for it, you can see here, um, I'm looking at the web, so web socket <laughs> traffic. Um, and you can see here, it's uh, as part of that mounting has, you know, given us back all of this data here, which is, um, it's probably not super easy to understand, but this is just um, the uh, stringified JSON for all that uh, data that goes into building the chart. And then here you can see it's also um, giving us, I guess, the markup for that view so it knows how uh, what to update. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So, you know, it's all, <coughs> most of it's happening on the back end, and then it just gives you some hooks <coughs> for after, I guess, the um, template's updated to go in and do what you need to on the JavaScript side. Um, so yeah, it wasn't super clear to me at first that that was a possibility. It seems like a pretty new feature. Um, so anyway, I thought I would get that out there. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if there's things you'd like to see more videos about also leave a comment. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about this, uh, hit subscribe and click the notification bell to get notifications about new videos and, uh, hit like that helps the channel, uh, and 
yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.